what we're going to do next is we're going to go to the style pane. So I click on home and then you'll see at the top here that we have various preset headings. To the right hand side, we have a button which is um, labeled styles pane and we're going to click that. Now here we can customize the style. Um, and this again is really important if your research degrees handbook specifies a particular font that you need to use. So currently you'll see that my, um, my written text is using Calibri as a font. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the style that, that I use throughout. I'm going to use the Times New Roman font instead. Now, notice that I said I'm going to change the style throughout. That is really important. You need to make sure that you use the same font throughout because consistency is key. That means that your main body of text, if you use Times New Roman, you need to use the same font for your footnotes and for your headings. So I'll show you how to do this. On the right hand side, we have normal. So normal is the style that's applied as a default when you begin um, writing in, in a Word document. You can actually modify this. So you click to the right hand side of that window where there's an, uh, a down facing arrow. Click that arrow and then click modify style. So here we can see all of the different um, properties applied to this style. So perhaps here what I'll do, I might rename this to body text so that I can remember that this is for the main body of text. Um, and as I said, I want to use Times New Roman. I'm going to use font 12 because that is typically a preferred font size um, for a thesis or dissertation. I'm going to leave the bold italic and underlining because I don't need that for my body text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the alignment. So here you'll see we have four options. I'm going to change the alignment here to justified text. That means that as you can see in the example window, the text stretches from one margin to the other margin. OK, so I've sorted out the, the text font, size and the alignment. But now what I need to do is um, customise the line spacing. So that is the spaces between the lines. What I do is I go down to this uh, drop down menu at the bottom left of this window and I click paragraph. It will bring me to this window and you'll see that the third um, subheading here is spacing. So I don't want to use single spacing for my main body of text. Um, typically, uh, you'll be required to either use 1.5 line spacing or double line spacing. Here, I'm going to use 1.5 lines and you'll see that that has their um, slightly changed the example that we've given. And then I'm going to press OK. OK. So it's really important that you make sure that this um, adheres to your regulations. Um, and particularly if you're engaged in a longer research programme, it's important that you keep checking your research degrees handbook and the regulations just in case there are any uh, changes in terms of style requirements. OK, so. We already have um, a title for this, so I'm going to use body text one. OK, there we go. So body text one. And you'll see that because the default setting when I started writing in this document was um, 
to use this preset and I've modified the preset that was the default, it's already applied those changes for me. Okay, now I want to add my headings. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the text that I want to um, change and I'm going to either go to the top here and click heading one or I can go to the style pane on the right hand side and do the same. So title page, abstract, acknowledgements, table of contents, list of tables. Here you'll see that I've slightly diverged from my consistency in the other titles. Here I've added a full stop and the others I haven't. So I'm going to remove that. It's an important part of proofreading. And I'm going to add my titles. Okay, add my headings. So those are my main headings. However, you'll see that the style that's used is Calibri again. And as I said, we need to make sure that our fonts are consistent throughout. Here I've used Times New Roman in the main body of text. So this means that I'm going to need to change my heading style. Again, I go over to heading, modify style. I'm going to choose Times New Roman. Here I'm going to make sure that the font is black. Just check again that the text is still justified. Check that it is um, using the font size that you want for your headings. So your headings might be permitted to be slightly larger. Um, maybe I'll just make them a little bit larger. I might choose to make my headings bold if permitted. I'll just check the spacing again. So here you'll see that we have automatically applied um, 1.5 lines. That was the default for Microsoft Word for heading one. There is some spacing before um, heading one. So that means that there is automatically going to be applied a larger space between the preceding text and the heading. So you might choose to um, remove this or you might choose to leave it. Again, make sure that whatever you do corresponds with your research degrees handbook. If the handbook is silent on this, then what you need to do is make sure that it still looks smart and in keeping with the rest of the document um, and that it is consistent. So perhaps I might say I don't want it to be 12 point because that's quite dramatic. I'll leave it at six. Okay. And then I click OK and it automatically applies to all the pieces of text that I had um, I had selected and um, applied heading one to. OK, and again, just to show you an example with these subheadings. So um, this is a heading two. Um, because it's the first subheading within my chapter. This is um, another sub subheading because it's a subheading of scholarly style. So I'm going to apply heading three to that. You can see again, that the, the style is slightly different here. So again, I'm just going to quickly make sure that I use Times New Roman, automatic, so on justified text. Um, and I might choose to use um, bold. I'm going to put the font to 14. If you want to, again, you can go and check the, um, the paragraph tab. I would recommend checking line spacing. So let's do that. OK, still at 1.5 lines. And here we have spacing of two points. Um, I don't want any spacing between my subheadings, so I'm going to remove that. OK. Um, and then I'm going to press OK. Now I'm going to do the same for heading three. Um, you'll be able to see here that you can modify your styles and actually um, do it on the basis of a style that already exists. 
Um, but if you're starting from scratch, it's not too much to, to um, start again. So Times New Roman, automatic, um, or you can make sure that you select black. Um, here's 12, but maybe I want to use 13. So that wasn't an option in the drop down menu. I'm going to apply it myself. Here I want bold, but I also perhaps want automatic for my um, sub subheadings, format, paragraph. We have the line spacing applied. I don't want any spacing before the heading and I click OK. OK, and there we can see that that has been applied. Um, now, one important thing before we leave that is that we need to make sure that the style that we use for our footnotes is um, the correct footnote style. OK, so um, here we need to click in the footnotes and we'll see that it shows us in this little window footnote text. Go to the right hand side and click modify style. The preset is um, a 10 point, uh, a 10 uh, size font. And my research degrees handbook requires that footnotes are size 10. So that's brilliant. Um, Times New Roman has already been applied and also the justify text. Um, but I'm going to go into paragraph because for my footnotes, I'm only supposed to have single line spacing. Um, so I'm going to make sure that that is applied and then click OK. And there we can see that it has changed the line spacing, but it's not impacted the line spacing in the main body of text. So again, make sure that there is consistency throughout in terms of the, the font that you use, but also that you adhere to the regulations. If you want to add a new style um, to the right hand side, so perhaps your regulations require you to um, have indented quotations in, um, in your main body of text um, and the indented quotations are only supposed to use single spacing and not double spacing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste this paragraph. I'm going to put it in quotation marks so that you can see how I might apply this. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new style. OK, so new style is based on normal. Um, so for us, normal is already preset in the body text. Uh, preset we customized earlier because remember normal is the default that applies when you begin writing in a word document because we um, edited that normal preset then um, that has already um, applied so we already have some basis of what we need so we have times new roman already applied font size 12 justified text but as I said, for indented quotations, we want to have single line spacing. OK, so you can do single line spacing here um, by clicking this. Or again, you can go down to the drop down menu and check line spacing here. That's a good idea because whilst you're there, you can check to see if there, any, there is any spacing before or after the text. OK, then we're going to click OK. Um, Oh, before we do, what we're going to do is we're going to use an indent. So I click this increase indent button here. The reason I did that is because remember I said that my um, my indented quotations need to have that, that indent. So I'm going to change the style name to indented quotations. Um, now, whether you need to use an indented quotation will depend on the length of the quotation that you're using. So make sure that you check the referencing handbook that you're using. Um, for Oscola, it is three or more lines of text. Okay. So 
The reason that this hasn't already applied is because we didn't um, highlight this text. So that's fine. We're going to highlight the text and then you'll see it's put it in the window here or in the style pane. And we can click indented quotation and it's done it for us. So that's something that you're going to need to do yourself throughout your work. Um, because remember, the automatic preset that applies is the body text style. So when you have an anomaly like your indented quotations, you can just do that yourself. But you've made it easy at the beginning by customizing your preset. So all you have to do is click one button and you know that all your indented quotations will have the same style. Again, if you need to um, add a footnote, references at the top and then insert footnote. OK, so. All of our headings have been customised by using the style pane. So if I click here, I can see that that is using heading one. If I click here, I can see it is using heading two. If I go further and click here, I can see that this is using heading three. It's important that we do that throughout um, because it makes life a lot easier when we come to adding a table of contents. 